Hey, today's video is on cursor project rules. This replaces the old cursor rules format. It's .mdc files as we'll see soon. Unfortunately, there's not a lot about it in the documentation. I don't know how cursor's been as successful it has been with such bad documentation. You really gotta get this fixed up. But anyway, I'm gonna show you how I use cursor rules in my own project today and how you can massively level up your project and how effectively your AI works once you have these rules set. I do have a lot of rules in my own project which I'm gonna go and show you. If I go to my MDC files over here under cursor rules, get dot cursor slash rules, you'll see I have all the MDC files. Now, a lot of you are probably familiar with how it used to be. So there used to be this big cursor rules file where you just dumped everything in one place. And this then got converted into MDC files. The cursor rules like this are actually uh, deprecated right now. This is part of my own project. It's called Inbox Zero. It's an AI email assistant. It manages your email for you and it's fully open source. And because it's open source, you get to read all my MDC files, which helps make development a lot faster. So I'm going to go over the MDC files first, and then I'll give you an example of its usage towards the end of the video. Now in my app, I'm using the same patterns over and over again. You're probably doing that as well. Like if you're adding a form to your app, um, I mean, this is what forms look like in my website. I use a uh, React hook form. I could actually, now reading this code, I could actually update it a bit. Like I'm constantly uh, improving my MDC files, but it should mention, you know, the resolver, the import and a few other things in here. But this is roughly what my forms look like. Your forms might look more like the Shad Sien standard. Um, but yeah, if I want an, the AI to add a form to the website, I want it to go through the same process every time, basically add the form, do the standard resolver stuff that I want. Um, here are the TypeScript types that it should import from somewhere else. Actually, there's a whole bunch of stuff that should actually be improved in this file. So it's good I'm looking at it. Um, and then here you can see it's calling an action. And if I wanna see how actions are called, so over here, I've got a server actions.mdc. This is one I actually added very recently, but here you can see I've got these Zod validation objects for every action. I'm also telling cursor where my different files are located. So, I mean, if I go over here in the project, um, let me show you. So here are all the different actions and you'll see how this folder is set out that every single time we've got like API key and then API key validation and so on or categorize and then categorize validation. The reason these are in a different file is because I also wanna import them on the client and you start to run into issues if you're exporting validation files in the wrong place. Anyway, your project will be different. This is Next.js stuff, but you know, structure it how you want. In my case, this is the structure. And so when the AI goes and when a human or an AI, this is documentation for anyone, honestly, for other team members that join this will also help them but you should put the server action over here in web utils actions and then give it a name and validation.ts and also here name.ts in the past i'd even use snippets to do this stuff so here you can even see some of my snippets in action oh if i type like uh, if i want uh, next js uh, get request so i'll do this and so now i'm moving more and more this, this stuff like these common patterns that they aren't snippets anymore they are, you know, information for the for cursor to go and implement. So it can do this themselves. Also, you might have used plop and generators to do this sort of stuff in the past. I definitely did. I love them. But now I see MDC as a sort of the new snippets or code generators for me. So what I've tried to do in each of my files is keep it fairly simple. What the, the AI needs to know is here, do the Zod validation and then also add the action, which looks something along these lines. This is how you import Prisma. This is how you do authentication. I use a certain wrapper called with action instrumentation that like helps me debug better with Sentry. But basically every single one of my actions looks something along these lines. There might be a revalidate path at the end. So now the AI knows the patterns I use. It doesn't have to search the code base and it can just go and use it very easily. Now, something important to know is a rule type. So you have uh, four different types of rule. And so you can have this information always be attached and so no matter what the AI is doing, it's always gonna get this information. But then you're sort of clogging up the AI with loads of like sort of extra context it might not need. You can also have it like be auto attached. Um, so whenever, you know, there's a .tsx file, I want this information to be added to it. I actually don't use that much. There's agent requested. So here you can see the agent will ask to see all this content. And when will it do that? When it needs to implement Next.js server actions. And the last one is manual where you can go and tag it. And you can still go and tag it. I will often pass it in the context when I need it. So like go add a new uh, server action to do whatever, right? And at the same time, I'll go and like do like the MDC, well, let's say API routes and I'll tag it. And sometimes I'll go and tag a few of them. I don't know if it's always picking it up on its own. And if I want to be hundred percent certain, I'm just going to tag those. So it's a pretty good way to make sure the AI is managing your project in the right way. And then at the bottom here, you can see it's a little buggy. Uh, it doesn't even show the bottom of the text here, but here are some guidelines um, in terms of 
maybe notes you want to add, maybe certain mistakes you see it making and so on. By the way, the easiest way to add an MDC file is actually like this, do new custom rule, test rule. And here you can see we have the rule built out and now you can change it to whatever you want. And so by the way, this might be a bit overwhelming because I have like 20 different rules but I didn't actually write them all myself. Like AI wrote a lot of them. And so one rule I have, which maybe you want to go and copy is cursor rules.mtc basically helps the AI create more cursor rules for me. So I'll be like, select a piece of code. Like uh, let's select a piece of code in the project. Like I guess an example we had, but like I'll add this to the chat and be like, create a rule for this. And then I'll go and tag the cursor rules MDC cursor mdc and let's see what it goes and does honestly they all go and create the file for me and based on the structure i want so here you can see it's popping it up the full file by the way it looks like this it's got like some what's it called front matter at the top i forgot what this is called but anyway it's got some metadata at the top of the file um this metadata is actually what you see over here so if you're in cursor and open this file it won't show that metadata it will like that's the information that you put at the top typically i'm deleting the globs because I don't want this only to run when I'm in a, a validation.ts context. Um, I really just want it to run when this description is true. And here you can see it's gone and created this pattern for us and it's saying how it should be done. Here you can see common email patterns and so on. And so it's written documentation for the AI to teach it how to use, uh, you know, to, how to use that pattern in my app. Now you might find there's a whole bunch of stuff here you don't care about, you can just delete it. So yeah, if you're going and adding rules right now, what I do is keep it really basic. Don't try and overthink it too much. Just if you know, well, API routes, I'm always doing it this way. So, you know, go and add a rule for that. Here you can see the get request that I mentioned earlier. Data fetching, I use SWR. So when I'm not fetching the server components, I'm fetching this way. You can see it's a pretty simple rule. It just shows it the pattern, not too much here. And this is how I want the AI to use it. Environment variables, if it decides to add environment variables to the project, I need them added in a few places. I want them added to the example.env. I also want them added to env.ts. If it's a public uh, variable available on the client, it should add next public. And then I also want it added to turbo.json. So the AI can do all of that for you. Then I've got some syntax over here. I actually don't like this format, but some YAML format as well. And here's some references, but my more modern MDC files I, I don't have this sort of structure in it. But in short, you can add whatever you want to the MDC files just to explain to the AI how it should be doing things. Write things it needs to do, write things it shouldn't do, good examples, bad examples, and so on. Here's a rule where I talk about the general project structure. So, you know, it's a turbo repo, mono repo, and I have the main app under apps web. Uh, this is where I have the actions. We saw that before. This is where I have the API routes, regular components, shad same components, and so on. If it needs to add a new page to the app, this is where it puts it. I like to do LLM specific tests. So this is a, a rule I wrote today. It makes it much easier for me to, I use the vtest and I can easily uh, run tests on the AI to see how it's working. If it's performing well on certain queries, this is how I want the AI to add LLM calls in my app because I use the same pattern. I have like 20 LLM calls. So I use the same pattern every time. This is how it should do blogging. This is how it should do Prisma. This is the Prisma schema file. It can go check up itself. This is how it imports from Prisma because it always gets it wrong when it's trying to do it for me. And the last thing I'll show you is I've been adding it for specific features. So this is a new inbox cleaner feature that I'm adding. And I'm basically just explaining to it what this feature is, the main files for it. Um, this is much easier to do for me for new features because, you know, it's like pretty concise. I know where all the different uh, files for it are. I try and co-locate them, but you know, there are a whole bunch of files across the app as well and the different database schemas it should find in the Prisma schema file. And so I've got another feature coming out now called knowledge. I'm actually going to show you that in a second. But I have a knowledge.mdc and I explain to it how knowledge should work in the system and I can use that to then say, hey, go and continue building this feature out or, you know, we want to adjust how it works or, you know, this is honestly is just super helpful for me if I want to copy and paste this into Claude or whatever other AI I'm using and it can be like, hey, like, let's try and think, think of certain wireframes for it. So just having this documentation ready for the AI is just like super, super helpful and makes it very effective in a lot of cases. And so here I've quickly switched branch. Here you see a new feature. So what I'm planning to do personally is each feature I develop like sort of more major feature. I'm going to create an MDC file for it. Um, you can see right now I've got a very basic Prisma schema. This is where the files are for it. You know, how you, you know, add a new one and so on. And yeah, so I'm adding a file one by one when these features come out because it just makes it a lot easier to develop the system. And by the way, some of this content at the bottom, it hasn't yet done. So I like tell the LLM like, hey, I need to make these, this part of it work. I've already got that documented. I probably would have written to the LLM anyway to go and write this stuff for me. 
uh, to the cursor chat, basically, cursor agent. Uh, and now I can say like, hey, this stuff has been implemented, but this specific part of the end hasn't been go and implement it. And so, yeah, th these are super helpful and these exist in the project forever. And they'll also be helpful in half a year from now. It's just more knowledge that I'm passing to the team. And my most important team member right now is cursor. So cursor agent, um, I'm trying to make it as effective as possible as my number one employee. So let's go and actually implement this. I'm going to quickly tell the AI a new feature that I want. Hey, I would like to add a memory system to my project. It's similar to knowledge that I already have, but it's AI memories that the AI creates when I'm chatting with it in my app. The user should also be able to see the memories that have been created and they should be able to edit memories in a form and delete memories as well. So we've written out the task and now what I like to do is because I don't have full trust, it's going to grab everything I need, but I will just add a few different MDC files that are going to be helpful for it, uh, maybe Prisma as well. So now it's got a lot of context um, and it's just going to do a better job basically. So let's run that. This is going to take a while and we can see already, I mean, it's added memory. That's great. Uh, memory validation. So these are all the patterns that we expected. Memory.validation.ts. Memory.ts is adding the actions, right? This is all the correct format. This is exactly how my app looks. I mean, I showed it to you before, but you, can you see it's just like doing it all for me? Like these could have been snippets and it's just like built them. Here's a form. Like again, like let's see, Th this is exactly what I I want use form um it's not doing it wrong this you know this form can both do update and create okay that's cool these are the inputs and this is how my inputs look by the way it's not like fully regular shadzi inside if i just let it go wild without having inspected my project it would have outputted different code like if you run that same command the code's just not going to look the same you see it's added this page it knows exactly where to add the page it's grabbing it from the server. I mean, it's on the author. This is literally that this would have been my code. Again, like completely the right patterns it's using here. Like <laughs> this is just excellent. Like, I mean, th this is the code I want written and it's just doing it. Here you can see a dialogue that pops up memory form. I mean, yeah, that's just awesome. Okay, unfortunately I, I was running that in chat mode so I couldn't just go and apply it all. I'd have to go apply on each one, but you get the idea. I mean, this could have been running on agent mode and in added it all. If I had done this without the MDC files, it just would have like output like way worse result. And yeah, I hope at this point you can understand why these MDC files are great. The cursor rules file was also great, but the main difference is cursor rules was just like one huge file basically. And now it's a lot more broken down. So here I had 250 lines in one file. I mean, that's great, but I'm constantly adding more and more rules. If you're a bigger project that could easily turn into a thousand lines and just like passing all of that to an LLM, it just costs more, honestly, and it can also miss stuff from within that file. And you don't necessarily want to provide everything on every single call. So now we can just search the pieces that it needs more easily. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, subscribe. I talk about different open source projects each week and also give Inbox Zero a star on GitHub. It would mean a lot to me. And thanks for watching.